Hello, everybody. Uh, we're going to get starting our uh, next session. So, hi, everybody. My name is Daniel Rowe. I'm CNCF ambassador. I'm so happy to be here as a moderate this session today. So, I'm really happy, I mean, uh, back to the return, I mean, in-person event uh, since the pandemic. So, today, uh, we're going to uh, talk a little bit about next session. As you can see, the Kubernetes event driven auto scale with Kater. So please welcome our next great speaker, uh, Jorge from uh, Dark Planner. I'm sorry, my bad pronunciation in Spanish. And the Zvinek from uh, the Red Hat, and the principal software engineer. And uh, please welcome. First of all, thanks to all for staying here. We will try to teach us to be funny and just share the knowledge. We are going to talk about Kubernetes Event Driven Auto Scaling, aka KEDA. And first of all, who am I? I'm Jorge Turrado, I'm SRE Lead of Planner Tech, I'm one of KEDA Maintainer uh, Board, I'm also Microsoft MVP in Developer Technologies, and you can see my social media network there, just if you want to. Write me, make me any questions you want, no problem at all. And now my fault, Zbigniew will introduce itself. Hey, my name is Zbigniew Robarik. I know the name is pretty hard to pronounce, but you both guys you did a pretty good job, so that's fine. I'm from Czech Republic, I'm a software engineer at Red Hat, and I'm working on OpenShift serverless, which is K native stuff. And I'm also KEDA maintainer. And yeah, we can go ahead. So uh, today we will talk about KEDA. So this is the agenda. And we can start. So basically, what is KEDA? What is the project? What is the main goal of the project? Uh, if there is just one sentence, one thing that you need to know after this presentation is that we are try really trying to make Kubernetes event-driven auto-scaling that simple. So probably, maybe we can finish the presentation. What do you think, Jorge? Uh, we have a lot of attendees. Please work um, a bit more. They want uh, to learn a bit more. Let's continue. I don't know. Let's uh, try to do it. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So I'll try something. So uh, what is the use case? So uh, let's say that you have a very simple application. It's a consumer application that consumes messages from some external service. Let's say you have, you have a Kafka consumer application that consumes messages from Kafka topic. And you would like to auto-scale this application. So how you can do it? Uh, on Kubernetes, you have HPA, right? But with HPA, the options are you can scale the application based on CPU or scale the application based on memory. But uh, now it is event-driven world, right? So everything is event-driven. So uh, this might not be the best solution how to drive the auto-scaling because the CPU or memory usage might not correlate with the needs for the, for the auto-scaling. So here comes KEDA for the rescue. So basically, this is the example application just redesigned to use KEDA. You don't have to change the application. You don't have to change the deployment. You just plug KEDA in. And KEDA will scrape metrics from the external service. So in this case, it is the Kafka topic. And based on the number of unprocessed messages, it will automatically scale our application. And if there are no messages, it can also scale down to zero. This is something that HPA cannot do. There is like an alpha version that's already in the, in the Kubernetes, but, but currently you cannot do that with HPA. So this is the main goal of, of the project. And basically, this is just a quote from one of the users that he mentioned, because there were, there were ways how to do the auto-scaling based on custom metrics. But the, the stuff to actually, uh, actually do that and to configure the custom metric is, is very, very complex. And we just try to do the same way, but very easily. Yeah, and we can imagine the common scenario before KEDA. I guess that you have been working with Kubernetes and probably in some scenarios where you need a, a scale based on, for instance, Azure metrics, AWS metrics, whatever, not important. As you don't know, or if you don't know, I should explain it to you, no problem. In Kubernetes, we have three different API metrics API. One is metrics, that is already locked by the, by the normal metric server. The second one is custom metrics. The third one is external metrics. Usually, uh, adapter like Azure Monitor, uh, Prometheus, or others, locks custom metrics. What's the problem? Imagine that you are starting your project, you are, okay, I have a Rabbit. Let's, all, let's install directly the Rabbit adapter just for scaling based on Rabbit. What's the problem? 
imagine that, oh, but I would like to get some metrics for rain from Instrument Monitor or from another provider uh, monitoring system. The problem is that you cannot because the, AP, the custom metrics API is already locked by your Rabbit uh, adapter. So you have two options. Move all your things to Prometheus, scrape, scrape in the metrics from different sources, and just use it for scale. And with that change, you could use the normal approach of deployment plus HPA. OK, what Keda solve? Why Keda is useful? At least in my opinion. Who, can, who could imagine that I found Keda useful? OK, the point is that we have more or less the same scenario here. We have the deployment, but we replace the HPA with the scale object. The scale object is just a CRV that uh, Keda register in Kubernetes API, APIs, which don't worry, we will see one example of them, but basically it's another object that says to Keda how we want to scale our application. So Keda will read this scale object and internally will refer all the needed things just for expose those metrics in a single metric server. So Keda will lock external metrics API for serving the metrics, but with Keda we could serve all the different upstream. We could have a scaler based on serving paths, another based on Prometheus, Kafka, and a lot of different scalers that Keda supports. <coughs> Just for giving some highlights about Keda, maybe in the other side, no, no problem. Keda, uh, the only intention of Keda is make the autoscaling simple. We don't want to manage any other thing than autoscaling. The, the scope is really limited. Keda started as a partnership between Red Hat and Microsoft. Uh, three years ago, could be? Yeah, more or less three years ago. Right now, it's a project of CNCF because Keda was donated to CNCF, and right now it's a, it's a incubation. Incubation, yeah, yeah. I saw some of them. It was, a, it was a donated a, two years ago, and after version 2.0, now, right now, it's an incubating project. And currently, the current version is 2.7, and usually we release new versions every three, month, every three months, just for giving some highlights about uh, how Keda works. And is Keda a project done by a group of friends? Of course, I expect that. I consider you as a friend. I will think about it. <laughs> oh my god, oh, you are breaking my heart. But apart from us, you can see we have more or less, a bit less than 5,000 stars on GitHub, more than 190 different contributors, and several users. And inside our contributors, there are, it's not a small company. Maybe the smallest company there is mine. But others are smallest companies like Red Hat, Microsoft, and ABM. Super small. Who knows about this, right? And also, our users are quite different. And we are, I'm super proud about them. If you use Keda, don't worry. You can be listed. We will be proud about you also. And just uh, going, uh, just finishing. In the bottom, you can see keda.sh slash community. You can see all the information about the community, about how we manage the project, because we try to be closest as possible to community, because it's a community project, not a business <laughs> project from a company. And every two weeks, we have our open meetup with all interested people. OK, so let's talk about um, the concepts and architecture, how Keda is designed and how, what it's actually doing. So as we mentioned, we are auto-scaling deployments. Kubernetes deployments, you can also spawn uh, Kubernetes jobs based on the events. Uh, and also you can target a custom resource if the custom resource implements specific thing, but you can also target your custom resources. So for example, Argo rollout. Uh, as, as we said before, uh, we have... I'm not doing anything. <laughs> it was you. We have 50 plus scalers, so different services, uh, AWS, Azure, Rabbit, Kafka, you name it. And basically, the main concept is this, really we scale based on the events in the target system. Uh, important aspect is that Keda itself does not manipulate the data. You need to handle da the data transfer to your application. We just do the scaling. Okay, so uh, this is like, let's say, the architecture. So there are two main components. There is Keda operator, 
that monitors the custom resources. <laughs> and then we have the metrics uh, server, which provides the metrics to the HPA. So under the hood, uh, Keda, for each scale object, Keda creates HPA that does the scaling from 0 to n, and Keda operator does the scaling from 1, uh, from, no, from 1 to n, and Keda operator does the scaling from 0 to 1, so that way we can achieve the full scalability. Uh, okay. So this is the example of a uh, scale object. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty simple. We just need to tell it uh, what workload you, you, you would like to, you would let it scale. This is the, like the scale target. Uh, then you define the minimum and maximum replicas, and then there is a trigger section. And in the trigger section, you can, you can specify multiple triggers. In this case, it is just a Kafka, so you specify, okay, this is my Kafka broker, uh, this is the consumer group, this is the topic, and the lag. So based on the, based on the lag, it will, it will automatically scale my application. There are multiple additional options, but this is just the highlight how you can, how you can do that. And this is scale job example, so this is the other CRD, so for, for spawning new Kubernetes can jobs. Can you explain a bit what is a scale job, super fast? Uh, okay, okay. So, Basically, it's, it's a very similar thing. Here you, here you put your standard Kubernetes uh, job specification, and based on the events on the system, it creates a new, new Kubernetes job. So it's uh, very good for batch processing and especially for processing uh, of long-running executions because uh, if, you would like to, if you would like to scale your application that um, handles some long, long process, the HPA thing might not be, might not be ideal because you know, once you process the messages, from the system and the processing starts, uh, the metrics are already already down. So HPA might scale down your application in the middle of processing. But if you scale jobs, you can just spawn a new new jobs to do the processing. Ah, yeah, some advanced features. Nice. So basically, as uh, we said, or again, I can say it uh, right now, uh, we try to don't reinvent the wheel. What that means? If Kubernetes already has a super good piece of software, of software named HPA controller, we just try to reuse it. I mean, we can expose the metric and then configure the HPA to request those metrics. But why couldn't we extend that functionality in Keda side? Why not? So, because we can, because we can, Keda, uh, implement some other features like a fallback mechanism. What is a fallback? Imagine that your Kafka broker, your uh, Prometheus server, whatever, is done, is done. So you cannot reach that. What do you want in that case? You can specify using the VCI feature, uh, setting the fallback replicas. Okay, if in case of uh, any upstream is uh, available for five times in a row, just scale to, or not scale to, just Consider that scaling, that uh, trigger, as a uh, requirement of scaling to the set replica. For instance, if you have more than one trigger and only one fails, that trigger will request that amount of replicas. And the other trigger could expose the other value. So the HPA will proceed uh, based on those metrics. Another important thing is that I hope that you don't need to customize the HPA, the HPA behavior because it's a pain. But maybe you need to do it. Because why not? It uh, could be the question. Keda support that uh, specifying those values in a section in the same job, and Keda will just pass through the HPA. But you can do it. If you need to customize, because you need to scale down, scale out, or scale in faster or slower, you can do it. So it's a good thing. One point, super nice. Uh, and trust me, I have been on call today, and this feature saved me. So trust me, it's a super good night. Uh, the possibility, the capability of pausing the auto-scaling. What that means? Imagine that you are under maintenance and you need to scale to zero. In other mechanisms or with other tools, you need to directly uh, remove the HPA because if you simply scale to zero your deployment, the HPA will scale out, uh, will scale out the, the deployment again. With this feature, you can just add in an annotation in your scale object. Don't worry, we will see how to do it in the demo. You can say, okay, never mind, I want to have this fit amount of instances, and I take the risk because I know what I'm doing. It's a way for doing maintenance or just for dealing with problems. So for me, it's one of the, <laughs> the best features that we have. Uh, obviously, Keda, as majority of software nowadays, is 
Prometheus metrics. Because if you don't do it, you are doing the things really wrong, in my opinion, at least inside Kubernetes. And right now we have more than 50 scalers, but the most important thing, the scalers are not opinionated the scalers. That, that means that they don't have any logic. They just go to the upstream and request the metric. If you need to do any logic based on the metric, just, no, I would like to have that metric plus one. Well, whatever, not important the target, but you can have more advanced uh, scenarios. Get that support being extended, implementing your own uh, uh, gRPC server, implementing the external scaler interface, or if you are more ca comfortable with uh, REST API, you can just use the metrics, uh, metrics API scaler and just implement your own API, uh, REST API, and just expose the value that you want and get that value from your work. You can do it. So you can extend Keda easily to fulfill your requirements. One sample, one sample of these extensions is the HTTP app. We try, not the, the object of this meeting, but just yes, for, yeah. for me. Mic, oh my god, oh yeah, I always break the microphones. Sorry. You speak too loud, probably. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Let me handle it. Okay. Nice. Sorry. Uh, the HTTP add-on is just uh, an external metric server that we use for extending uh, and scaling based of NT on HTTP. It's in beta, I guess, but it's an example. So there is an example of external metric implemented inside Keda. And in the last line, don't worry, these uh, slides will be shared, so you don't need to just copy in your blog, uh, your blog don't worry, is the link to the it's to the scale object definition, just for watching all the, all the capabilities inside the scale object. And what about authentic authentication? This is important topic, in my opinion, is one of the most important things in Keda, because Keda usually needs, based on the work that Keda does, usually needs high privilege on different systems. Keda needs to the, the permission for listing me, Kafka brokers, uh, for listing messages, so it needs some privileges that are quite risky if they are not good managed. So for, to, for solving that, first of all, Keda allows to reuse the credentials. I mean, you don't need to just copy and paste credential every play, in every place that you are there. You can specify to Keda, okay, just go to the workload and take this environment variable that where it's already the, the secret. You have music as well? Yeah, yeah, I can cool. dance. No problem at all. Uh, and how can, how can do that or how can go further and reuse more? Keda has another two CRDs, another custom resources, one is trigger authentication and the other is cluster trigger authentication. You could imagine the difference. One is namespaced and the other is just a cluster scope uh, applied. And basically, using them, we can extend even more the security capabilities. Why? Because we can use, uh, we can specify some secret from, okay, took the secret from the deployment or from that secret, but also from pod, from pod identities. I don't know if you know what are pod identities. Basically, pod identities is a mechanism from several cloud providers for using system managed identities in their, in their site. So it's the most secure thing. <coughs> it's like uh, system managed identities in Azure or AAM in AWS. So it's the most secure option. But if you don't, if you don't use them, you can use HashiCorp Vault directly integrated inside Keda, not using any other integration. Keda can go to HashiCorp Vault and just read from them, and also from Azure Key Vault. Yeah, just to add that to this, the cluster authentication is, is good because, for example, you, you have an administrator who has some credentials and they don't want to share it with the developers, so he can you know, define the cluster trigger to authentication object and the developer just reference in the scaled object to this cluster trigger authentication object. So we can do this stuff as well. Okay. Um, yes, for showing some highlights. So I will, I will maybe show the Keda stuff, you will show the Prometheus because I don't like it, yeah? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so again, this is, like the, this is like the scale object. So as you can see, again, very simple, just the scale target. 
Uh, if you don't specify the API or kind, it's automatically deployment. But you can define, as I said before, you can use the custom resources, for example, as a algo, uh, algo route. So then you specify the API, API and API version and kind. Then the minimum, maximum replicas and the trigger section. So you see it's just a couple of lines. And you can yeah, explain the yeah, for sure. stuff. You catch me drinking. Yeah, I know. We need to prepare better for the next time. Yeah. OK, in this side is the common HPA. Nothing new under the sun under the sky, the common HPA. But it seems, or they seem, quite similar. The problem is that for using this site, for using this HPA, you need to do this also in the adapter. I mean, you need to configure the adapter just for renaming the metrics and exposing them in the namespace you where need them. So the HPA is quite similar, but the work under the, under the hood is higher. It's really higher. With Keda, you don't need to do this. To do this. You only need to spawn Keda in the cluster, install them, and that's all. Yeah, so if, for example, you would like to scale your de one deployment, you need to define the, the rules. If you would like to add another deployment or, or auto scale it, you will need to again reconfigure the whole adapter. It is not like the CRD thingy. Okay, and what about now? Yeah, demo time. So. Yeah, talk is cheap. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I can talk maybe, and you can. Yeah, for sure. So as you can see, this is like the... No, they cannot see. Oh, they don't see? Why? OK, I don't know. So this is the deployment, right? Yeah. Yeah, I can do it. Don't worry. OK. Yeah, basically, just for improving the demo, I will do it there. Just for not making a bit bully them, always presenting there. Uh, you can see there, I, for just for improving the process, we have in, we uh, start in a scenario, I have already installed Keda. Keda is already installed in the cluster, and I already installed a Helm chart, a Helm chart, obviously Helm chart. A Rabbit uh, queue, I installed a Rabbit server just for uh, using Rabbit scaler as sample. But you can, after the demo, I will say, show you the, where you can download the whole sample. But basically, we have already deployed this file in the cluster. This file just has a secret with the secret of the for connecting rabbit host. Has a super simple deployment uh, with a mistake. The annotation is not there, but ignore it. It's just a sample like a rabbit customer. Don't worry, it the queues messages from the queue and do absolutely nothing with them. But the most important thing, please scroll below is this. This is the scale object. In this scale object, we are basically specifying the, the scalar target ref, basically what, were, what we want to scale. Nothing important. These values are for just for improving the speed of the demo and the max replica count. We want to have 30 replicas at maximum. And the triggers. This is the place where we are, we are going to introduce the different scalers the different rules that we want to use just for scaling. In this case, important is an, is an array. So you don't need to scale based on only one. You can specify all of you want without any limit. Without any limit. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> just double checking. And the trigger authentication. Why a trigger authentication? Just for specifying where, where are, where is the connection string from for their Rabbit server. And we define the trigger authentication and we specify it inside the trigger just for saying this trigger should use this authentication. So go there and take the parameters, the secret parameters from there. And just for doing the things totally transparent, I will deploy this job. This job is Super simple job just for enqueuing. Uh, it generates the load, basically. Yeah. You should mirror the screen, right? You should yeah, use. yeah, but as you can see, I'm not the best with Mac OS. OK. You are Microsoft Pine Boy, right? Yeah. Should I but not my, not my bosses. Okay. My bosses are more Microsoft haters. Yeah, that's good. 
you have a typo over there. Yeah. Hi. Thanks. Oh boy. Yeah, that's good. Nice. I can hold it. Oh, yeah. thanks. So Jorge just created the the publisher job, which is the stuff for generating the load. Yeah. As you can see, he can pre. And right yeah. now we are going to watch. That is watch kubectl. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, so for watching. Watching the consumer application. So he's watching the workloads. As you can see, it's already auto scaled down to zero. I don't know why. I know because yeah, I make a bit uh, joke for him. It's a trap. Okay. I added the annotation that I explained it during the during the <coughs> presentation, just for pausing the auto scaling and showing. So we need. So, okay. Sorry, I will remove it locally because otherwise it could be a pain. Best demo ever. As you can see, the annotation is there. Is this? So I will try to remove it. Oh my God! Sorry. Nice. Safe. Okay. No problem. And. Now, automatically, the auto-scaling has started. One instance, because we were in a zero scenario, we were just scaled to zero. So remember, the operator has increased from zero to one, and now the HPA will take care, we take the control, and we'll scale this workload. So in a few moments, we could see that, OK, right now we have four instances. Yeah, because we are generating the load, so we are generating messaging uh, to the RabbitMQ, and the application is probably processing them, and it will be scaled down to zero, right, after a couple of seconds? Yeah, after we will reach 30 instances, and suddenly we will scale to zero again. Okay. So maybe in the meantime we can check the additional stuff, right? Because we don't have too much time. Yeah, in the meantime. Oh, oh my God, sorry. <laughs> This is the URL. Basically, this URL, this demo, is there. It's a public demo that we have. We use a Rabbit, and if you go there, you will see step by step how to re reproduce this demo just for try in your under infrastructure. You could try it in Minikube, in local cluster. Never mind, no problem. That's why we try to use Rabbit. They don't pay us for using Rabbit, trust me, or at least not to me. No. But basically, that's the, the URL. You can find it uh, in GitHub slash Kedacore slash Rabbit uh, Sam. OK. No, the screen is not mirrored. So can you move the slides? Yeah. Yes, for sure. As you can see, already auto scaled down to zero. So it is, it is pretty simple. And maybe we can go further, right? Yeah. So can you go to the slides? That sounds easier than it is. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Presentation. You don't need to do the presentation, right? Nice. Okay. Again? No. No, 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 no. <laughs> we are bored about you. Yeah. I will say that this is. Yeah. yeah, awesome. So what about the future of, of the project? Because you know we can already auto scale the stuff, but still we would like to stay focused on one thing. Uh, so there are several things that we would like to improve. So one of them is caching the actual metric values in the in the Keda. So then you can uh, save basically the traffic to your to your external service. So for example to do Kafka broker. Or then maybe we can do some nice analysis on the on the values and maybe do some predictions. Maybe plug some AI ML stuff into and monitor uh, monitor the basically the metric values and then based on that maybe start scaling a little bit faster or a little bit in advance. Uh, another another thing because um, as Jorge said at the beginning, the, there is the limitation that could, there could be only one ex extension point for metric server in the Kubernetes cluster. So that means that you can have only one installation per per whole cluster. 
So we will need to somehow solve this. So this is another like a big thing that we would like to do. Other cool thing is uh, cloud events because cloud events are everywhere right now. So we would like to, you know, maybe expose some cloud events and do, do some cool stuff. So then you can, then you can integrate uh, integrate basically uh, Keda with your portfolio and maybe you know based on the cloud events, based on the statistics about scaling, you can do some additional stuff. Um, yeah, and that's probably it. So do you have anything else? Mm, yeah, I, I have noticed that I don't know when we delete the one of important features that Keda supports our architecture yeah. in the latest version. It's not uh, critical, but if you are on AWS and you are using Graviton Node, you could use also there. So do you have any question? Yeah, so you know that. So we have a five minutes. So we have Oh, we have five minutes and we have a bunch of t-shirts here, so if you have any question and any Good questions, yeah. t-shirt. Bad questions, <laughs> go out. That is a really good one. So yeah, just uh, bear in mind, so we have a one virtual question, we're going to maybe address that first. Okay. So can you scale a pod according to the load of the deprox pod? Uh, you, you need to you need to somehow get the metrics from the different port. So once you expose the metrics from the different port, maybe from through uh, Prometheus, then you can scrape the Prometheus uh, scale, scrape the metrics from the port through Prometheus. So basically, uh, to do the scaling, we always need to have the basically the source. So yeah, this is doable, I suppose. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for the answer. And then questions. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna do first. first. Uh, I think the start, at the start you mentioned you can uh, create multiple scaled objects for the same uh, deployment. Nope. No, no there could be can. only one scale object per uh, deployment, okay. but you can specify multiple triggers in one scale object. So it, there could be like a trigger for Kafka, for Prometheus, for Rabbit, or, or CPU targeting the same, uh, same deployment. And then HPA works this way that basically it mm, selects the, uh, the greatest value to drive the, to the scaling, so basically. Okay, so, so it takes by greater, greater value, there's no like exactly, fight exactly. between them. So I can, for example, do something like uh, scale by metrics and then say, uh, Wednesday I have an event at 4 p.m. I want to scale it way up and it will not fight. Yeah. Okay, very interesting, thank you. But all, there must be always only scale object targeting the deployment. You cannot combine scale objects and your HPAs. It could be only one one object. So if yeah, you one object, but it, it manages. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Got it. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm gonna go to back there. Go for it. Thank you. Um, how does it work, for example? I mean, in this scenario, that you are upgrading an application, so you are triggering triggering a Kubernetes deployment, and it's scaled to zero. What happened? Nothing, because uh, because if you update the deployment, uh, Keda will, after a few seconds, it will notice that the deployment has changed, like the, that the uh, replica so number doesn't uh, equal what is basically provided by the metric server. So it will again scale to do what should be do. But that, that's, the th that's the thing I'm wondering. For example, if you have a scale to zero and then you are constantly checking, for example, the number of messages mm -hmm. in RabbitMQ, and then you upgrade the version of that application, no, 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 There's no, 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 Keda, do, Keda does it for you. Okay. Keda monitor all the time the upstream, so if you don't have any message in the queue, Keda will scale your deployment into zero, and Keda still be con uh, monitoring the, the queue, and yeah. when there is any message in the queue, will be Keda who scale again into one, and then the HPA. You don't need to do any more, more than a deploy the scale object once at the beginning. And that's all. Because you are always targeting the same deployment, it doesn't mean that it was changed. You know, the version was changed, but it is still still the same deployment, so it doesn't care. Like so, the, it should it should work. Okay, thank you. Yeah? Thank you. So there I think that we have one already. last question there. Don't worry, you can meet us after the meeting. And yeah. Ask your question directly to us. Don't worry, you don't have time. We will be here until uh, yeah, Sorry. Hey, uh, so does, uh, you know, I'm thinking specifically around Kafka, but it probably applies elsewhere. Um, does Keda support like partition level um, scaling? Uh, 
No, Keda itself does not scale Kafka. It scales just the consumer application. But for okay. example, if you are consuming uh, messages from Kafka, it doesn't make sense to scale out the number of consumers that is larger than the partition. So yeah, it's, it's kept. So basically, it will scale only to the maximum number of partitions. You can uh, rewrite this so we can, uh, there is an optional value. I would like to scale to more consumers, but it doesn't make sense. But mm -hmm. yeah, this is covered. OK, cool. Thanks. Maybe we can do another question. There was one at the. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Hi, I saw in the demo that you were like, you put 18 replicas and then he went up super fast. Do you have like throttling? Because in case uh, I the, wanna. Th this is the stuff that you define on the HPA level. So this is like the scale, it's called scaling behavior. So then you can define like the, all the options. This, this is uh, uh, everything okay. that's provided by HPA, it can be like. To okay, that. And um, can also be by external services. Can my, my limit can be based on the, the metric of external service. I'm not sure I get the question, sorry. Like in case, like I am, I don't know, putting in a Amazon limit. I am using AWS services. I'm, I am putting like a, a batch of, of bots running. Mm -hmm. well, I don't want to get the limit of throttling of AWS. Could I put like a limit on that, based on that limit, by checking one metric from AWS and to see if I reach in the limit of the throttling or not. I don't know if I explain well. Maybe we can discuss this offline because I'm not yeah, sure okay. I get it properly or do you understand? Okay. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, so thank you so a great presentation and demo today. And thanks for attending. So enjoy the rest of the KubeCon. And the teachers, yeah?